Hey, how you doing? Hey, come here. Hey, come here. Hey, come here. Hey, come here. Hey, city school system and you have said in your word that a house divided against itself shall not stand so tonight
School Systems Accreditation Agency. Thank you. You may not call for the question unless there's two thirds majority. May I continue? Thank you. <clears throat> investigation into violations of the open meeting law should be immediately investigated. The district attorney, who along with the office of the Secretary of State, should investigate election fraud pursuant to Georgia Code 21-2-217, which lays out the rules for residency to qualify to run for elected office. <laughs>
for this particular board meeting. This time limit may be increased, which has been done. Persons who wish to speak at a, at a meeting must sign prior, and that has to happen. The following rules for addressing the Board of Education will be amended as explained by the chairman. Each speaker will have five minutes or a time limit that is desirable by the Board of Education. Personnel issues should not be discussed in open meetings except as provided by federal, state, and local law and policy. References to an employee must be made using the term teacher, administrative employee, coach, and so on. Personal conduct may be removed from the meeting. Person speaking must address the Board of Education rather than the audience. At this time, we have Ms. Tina Folsom for.
um, for the decision that was made by the Board of Education. And let me be clear, when whites have made decisions on behalf of black constituents, nobody said a word. Blacks have been working. It wasn't going to happen. 
However, I was asked to replace an incompetent teacher that didn't look like him while she was given a small and old manageable class. In addition to my responsibilities, I was asked to teach my younger privileged counterpart how to handle those children that looked like him. Only to watch him pass me and become my boss. He had one master's degree, I had two. The Board of Education approved the promotion. No fanfare was made. No crowds were gathered. I just kept on teaching until I decided to resign. As a member of the Valdosta Board of Education and being a part of the minority, quite often, more, more times than not, our suggestions, requests, and votes made no difference when the majority voted together. We abided by the protocol and policies that explicitly require the majority vote rules. We watched an awesome African-American principal be transferred to manage the transportation and drive buses. Even after the superintendent had promised the Board of Education that he never put a certificated person in that position anymore. However, the majority were in unity and the desire of their heart for, 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 for the field. No one on the minority section asked for a new vote, tried to sway a vote, or challenge the final outcome. Protocol was followed and each person's open office was abided by. The employee stepped into his position and fulfilled it in an exemplary manner. He later became the superintendent of the Valdosta City School System. No crowds came, and the vision was not created. We grew, he grew where he was planted, and he grew <coughs> there. Finally, I would encourage this board to focus on that which is important. What's best for our children? When I heard Malcolm Mitchell's story, my husband and I were severely sad. Malcolm was a great football player. But he left the Wildcat Valley not being able to read. He played football. Why couldn't he read as a 12th grader? Who failed it and who used it? I would like to tell every parent, if your child is not a high C getting ready to cross over to a B, his future should not be football, but rather football. How many of our boys will receive scholarships to Florida State University
four sons of John Lewis died, echoed, echoed in the chambers of Congress. Aren't we much better than this? Not only is the country divided, but we let a situation as this divide our city. So my words are tonight, if we are here for the children, then let us be here for the children. And I pray that God touch your heart, whether you decide to let Coach Rod stay. I ask God to touch your heart, whether you decide to let him go. But tonight, we need to bury this hatchet. I say today, I hear facts. We have kids, and I'm going to speak on what I know. We have our black kids in football. We have some that are failing, so let's not play games and act like we're going to ignore it and put it up under the rug. Because I don't want any kids to go uneducated. I don't want to get any black kids to go unnoticed. But if we be real, let's be real. We have a lot of kids that are failing in the system. If we can come out and be in unity on Friday nights and cheer, then there's nothing wrong with cheering the Wildcats. I'm an ex-Wildcat. I know the program inside and out. Been there, done that. But what I cannot understand and tolerate is why we have our kids uneducated. Not only the ones that don't go to college, or will not go to college, will not go to a Division II or Division three. We can't even get them into, into wiregrass. It's a shame. It's a shame. I deal with a lot of kids day to day basis that comes out of Dogs High School. Not only out of Dogs High School, but Lions High School that walk the streets. 15, 16, 17 year old kids walking the streets, uneducated, can't get a job. The law enforcement that stand around here deals with them on the same day to basis. Either they're drug users, trying to sell drugs, drug addicts. Because we let them down. So I'm saying tonight, this is not a black thing. This is not a white thing. It's what God sees us as, people. God don't look at us as colors and people, but black and white. He looks at us as his children, his people. So we need to put away this racist thing that I keep hearing in the wind in the town. We got so many thousands voting to keep him, and we got a lot of blacks that want to let it go. It's not about that. As they say, don't believe the fake news. It's fake news. And I'm going to end this, and I'm going to wrap it up. My point is, education is a must. Without education, you can't live, you can't survive. Whether you're white or black, you cannot survive without education. And, and, and I understand it's white panels, it's white members on the board here. I understand your kids want the best education. And the black kids should want the best education also. We need to learn how to pick each other up. We put so much energy in football and fuss about a coach getting fired and a coach getting hired. We put the kids out of the way. And I know you're here for the coach. I understand we're here for the coach. I understand the purpose of this. But without kids, there are no coach. There is no coach without kids. So we got, and I said this, I said this several years ago before the board. And some of you knew it might not have heard it, but I said this before. We have to learn how to, we have to learn how to take the students today, and, I, and I'm going to be about to tap me out. We have to learn how to take and make our kids student athletes. Turn them back over to be student athletes instead of letting them just be plain athletes. I yield my time. Thank you, sir.
school board and Mr. Ball, thank you for letting me address you here tonight. And I do not take lightly the gravity of this situation. And I appreciate your attention and allowing me to stand to speak. Those of you that don't know me, I'm a sixth grade football coach at Austin Middle School and Newburgh Middle School. We're together. Have done that since 2003. I'm also on the radio on Friday nights. You might recognize this loud voice from that. But I'm so much more than that. I'm a dad. I'm a dad that had two kids, twin boys, come through this program. And trust me when I tell you, there was many a night they came home and they told me, Dad, Coach Rod is kicking my butt, and they wanted it. They didn't like it. They didn't like what was going on. Because there was a struggle. And I told the boys, embrace it. Embrace the struggle. And their future at the end of it. My kids played for this man. And a lot of kids behind them played for me. And they didn't play black kids. They didn't play white kids. It was black and gold. That's the color I believe. Thank you. 
thank y'all for having the opportunity to uh, speak tonight. I do want to take a quick moment and tell you about a, a young man that got a Division I football scholarship. Uh, the head coach loved him to death. He worked him. He pushed him. They loved him. They, they, they got him to where he wanted to be. And I just want to remind y'all that that gentleman's name is Jockey Bell at the University of Texas. Jump right up right now and say, I want my coach back. I want my coach back. 
But I gotta tell you something. I'm born and raised 52 years right here in the city of Dallas, Georgia. And I love my community. I love the black community and I love the white community. And I dare say I love the Lebanese community. None of y'all up there are Lebanese by the way. <laughs> but I gotta point out, I gotta point out that when you blindside a man in a community without any valid reason for firing someone or for not renewing a contract, it raises all sorts of concern and speculation. What are we supposed to do? What is our community? What's your community supposed to do? Yes, wonder, speculate, surmise, all things that, by the way, jury or it's illegal for a jury to do that. But that's what we're all out here doing. And so what are we, what are we left with? Are we left with innuendo that hurts Coach Ryan? that damages him and damages his family, innuendo, ideas, speculation. That's what we're left with. Are we left with trying to figure out why this decision was made in the first place? Well, it's been talked about. And we talked about, I heard someone mention earlier, you know, when, when a white fellow gets dismissed, all hell breaks loose. Well, let me make it crystal clear. This summer, 25 years, I'll be practicing law this summer. And any of you that know me, know that I have fought discrimination, systemic discrimination, as a matter of practicing law for 25 years. I have devoted my entire adult life to it. And 99% of the time, I'm on the side of African Americans in an overpopulated criminal system. And I'm doing it for free in my life. But today, I'm going to coach lawmakers' side. You know why? Because discrimination is wrong. And I don't care what color you are, it's wrong. These young men that fight every Friday night, there's a piece of that that suggests, okay, we're in the stands and we're just paying attention to work, cheering, bring popcorn and hot dogs and what have you. The fact of the matter is, a lot of those young men are benefited incredibly by being the president. They're benefited by the leadership of Coach Rodman. Our entire community benefits from his leadership. Yes. I'm asking you to do one thing tonight. Have the courage, summon the courage, have the bravery to look inside yourself and do the right thing. Right this wrong and let this community heal. Oh, yeah. Thank you, sir. I'm losing a lot. 
but I want to stand on integrity and I want to stand on character. These kids, I get them at five years old. And I mentally tell them they're going to be wildcat. And I brainwash them to be wildcat. But if not, when I go to a Friday night and I see a kid that's standing in the stands or not playing on Friday, that bothers me. Because it's not about the starters. We was always told it's the deal to be enough to be, it's the whole team. Until we bring this team as a unit, until it stop being about the starters, and start being about the whole body, about their grades and everything else, that's when Wildcat football becomes great again. But until then, it's going to be about one person. And when I play ball, it never was about one player person. It was about a team. I have no hate in my heart for Coach Wildcat, but I do question his integrity as in character. If you can't talk to a young man with a wife that's down in breast cancer, I do question that. And I want you all to question that decision also. All right. All right. That will conclude the public participation tonight. Mr. Chairman, could I be allowed to speak at this point? church meal and put all three kids in Dallas to high school. At this point, I have two young men that graduated from Dallas to high school, and I've got one daughter as a sophomore. I want my kids in Dallas to high school. Tonight has been, to me, until the last few speakers, has been an embarrassment to this community. And this is a, some of the things I heard earlier tonight, some of the things I've heard the last two weeks, had I known them when I came here, I would have chosen the offside or the offside as a city that I wanted to bring my family to. But in my 10 years here, I don't see that. I, I've seen it in the last two weeks. I don't see that. I haven't seen the racism. You know, in, in the game 13 this year, we had 115 kids dress out. 110 of those were African American. I've always coached African American kids my entire life. And I'm so thankful that my parents, one from Iowa, uh, and one from Oxford, North Carolina, never showed me racism. Never, never one time do I remember them making a decision based on race. And so I'm all against it. I've trusted this community. I've trusted this community. My, my son's one is at Georgia Southern, uh, in, earning an engineering degree. The other one's at Florida State. The other one's a sophomore who's trying to, trying to earn her high school diploma. My assistant coaches. I have 12 assistant coaches. All in all, I got 40 assistant coaches within the system. Half of my assistant coaches work in the system. They've got teachers, they've got wives that coach that teach in the system. And by the way, let me reiterate, my kids went to Austin High School. And I know plenty of board education, plenty of people at the board office, plenty of people at the high school that send their kids to Lowndes and Bellwood, and I, I'm fully invested in Bob's high school, and I'll stay that way. <laughs> Regardless of what happens tonight, I'll stay that way. Let me tell you something. Lowndes and, and Bellwood love, love when we implode like we've done the last two weeks. They love that we're meeting out here tonight and struggling over just getting along. It's embarrassing to me, and I know it's embarrassing to a lot of you here, and I just want to write that along for my players. My players did ask for this. My players are rocking along, ready to go. We've got a bunch of kids coming back. All they're talking about now is their goals, state championships, graduating from high school, being a better person. There was no feed the cats until me and two ladies from this touchdown club thought it was perfect. That didn't exist when I got here. And hopefully it exists way after I'm gone. For the program and the school and the superintendent and the principal, 
This place needs love, but most of all, it needs stability. I'm the only coach left on the staff of 2010 that, I, that got here 10 years ago. I want to be here. I want to remain here. When my son signed with Florida State, I told my wife, I think we can retire from here. Two weeks later, I was given this call at 9.30 at night that said I'd been voted out. Stand up. If you're here to support me and my coaches, right now.
February the 11th, 2020, on time, I'd like to entertain a motion for personnel section A, which consists of retirements, one teacher at Valdosta High School, one school nutrition director, one secretary at Valdosta Middle School, one paraprofessional at Newton Middle School, one lunchroom manager at S.L. Mason, resignations, three teachers at Valdosta High School, one teacher at Salas Mahone, one teacher at S.L. Mason, one main director at Valdosta Middle School, one teacher at Valdosta Middle School, one paraprofessional at W.G. Hunt, one custodian at S.L. Mason, one custodian at J.L. Lomax, Two hires, one teacher at Los High School, two teachers at Dallas Mahone, one teacher at SL Mason, one sub nutrition assistant at okay, it's, it's School Nutrition Central Office, one custodian at Denver Middle School, one custodian at Dallas Mahone, promotion, one custodian at Los Middle School, two custodians at WG9, one custodian at Pine Elementary. Termination one sub nutrition assistant at the school nutrition program, two custodians at South Mahone, transfers two sub bus drivers. Good point time to take a motion. Who got a separate recommendation from Superintendent Baker? We have a motion. Second. Second. All those in favor? Division now. Good point time to entertain a motion for personnel list B. <laughs> recommended to return for 2020-2021 one head football coach at Palasa High School. Chairman, I make a motion to accept the superintendent's recommendation. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion to accept the superintendent's recommendation for personnel list D. We have that. And a second. All those in favor, raise your hand. All those again, opposed? Anybody know?
appreciate y'all. Appreciate you. Yes, sir. Appreciate you. Peace, brother. Take care, man. This one, <laughs> yeah, just have to worry about them too. You ready? Yep. Okay. Okay. Um. Yeah. Sure. Steve Nichols. S T E V E N I C H O L S. Okay. Um, why did you want to come out today and speak on coaches' behalf? Just the position I'm in in the community. I happen to do a, uh, a radio show and as a talk radio show host in the mornings. It's been a hot button topic locally. So we've discussed it ad nauseum for you know a week or two and uh, just the outpouring of the community and support of Coach uh, Rodemaker. I interview him every week, every Thursday at 7.30, or excuse me, every Tuesday at 7.30 a.m., and I've gotten to know the man, his character, and uh, just felt the need to stand up for him, and more so stand up for the community and what's right, so that's why I'm here. Yeah. Um, reaction to tonight's vote? Um, not shocked, honestly. Uh, with the backstory that I've gotten this week, I was hopeful that the board would, you know, correct what I feel to be a wrong decision, but had no faith in it. Uh, it takes leadership to do the right thing, and, and uh, I didn't see it coming from, from those five. Who do you think this affects mostly? The the very specific people who you think it, it, affects? it affects the team, first of all, uh, and the program, the Wildcat tradition. Uh, people that live outside the community may or may not understand that, the importance of it. The, the many state titles, the national championships, the region championships, the tradition set forth by the, the great coaches of you know, Baysmore and Hyder and now Coach Rodemaker, it's going to affect the program and, and uh, the support of the program has carried it through the years and now that that support is going to possibly be taken away, it's just going to end up hurting the kids, it's going to hurt them educationally, Not, it's not really a football matter. You heard the statistics from some of the speakers and I uh, just think it's the wrong decision when you talk to so many people and you look at the polls, it's overwhelming community sport for Coach Rodemaker and for whatever reason five members of the board didn't take the recommendation of a doctor of education, Dr. Todd Kaysen, who is a professional, decades of experience and is a doctor and he recommended the re and in their infinite wisdom the board said, no, you don't know what you're talking about. 
Yeah, what do you think this will, I know you talked about the kids, what do you think this will do to the players that are set to return next year, expecting Coach Rodemaker and that's not who they're going to get next year? I'm not sure about that. I received a lot of email, a lot of phone calls, a lot of text messages from some of his players, and not one single player had anything disparaging to say about Coach Rodemaker. So uh, they're going to be hurt. Uh, th that's the ones that we hope get through this. I mean, we've all been young before, and it makes an impression. And you got to hope that they overcome this adversity. And I pray for the next coach uh, that comes in here. He's going to he's going to have a, a he's going to have more than a football job to reunite the football team, coaching staff, the community, and, so, and the boosters. Let's be honest, the feed the cats program that you've heard so much about tonight. That was created because of the success and the support of the program. And if the support of the program disappears, the success of that program is going to go down, and that's a shame. Yeah. I'm good. Thank, Thank you so you. much. I appreciate Thank you. that. No problem. city school system and you have said in your word that a house divided against itself shall not stand so tonight we ask for peace we ask for peace we ask the prince of peace to make sure that everything done here tonight will be peaceable we pray in jesus name that your will will be done 
must do what we have to do. Your response about a legal one, perhaps written by your lawyers. You and your attorney are concerned about what is legally right. We are concerned about what is morally right and fair. Any democracy, all rights, must be measured by the same yardstick. Democracy must not mean majority rule when the majority is white and minority rule when the majority is black. It is simply not fair for blacks to get $437,888 or less than 1% of 1% of the 80 plus million dollars allocated to the building of the new high school, when approximately 80% of the children attending school will be black, and our unemployment rate is 17.5% in rising, and the 
newspaper, it said that they could not find one minority contractor in Lowndes County capable of building that project. Guess what, people? You're sitting here and one that I do. This is my world. You want to take one, take this to another one? My little boy goes to the other. But in the newspaper it said we could not find two minority contractors capable of this project. Yes, I will agree, it is a large scale.
We're not going to stand by and allow this to happen. Not, we're not going to take it. It's not the end. It's not going to be any end. You know, I was here last time, I seen you smile and your face out there talking. But I want to let you know tonight what makes you laugh and certainly makes you cry. It's a long fight for that. And you will do every, everything in our power to make you cry for what you've done. You robbed this community. You took the money right out of our pocket. You took our hope for it. You thought you did. You didn't really, you didn't really take the hope for it. But the money that could have went into the contract, you never did really agree to sit down and have a meeting. What was wrong with this whole conversation? What was wrong with it? What was wrong with just sitting down and meeting Dr. Floyd Rose and I'm going to have the contract to seek to be hammered out? What was wrong with the colloquium being on this problem? Why didn't you make the choice? It's obvious. Just ask a lot of power here. Here, he said he said the seven ninth and, and the eighteen sixty and have always been this way and that's gonna change it's got to change blacks are not the only ones suffering from it all the local contractors are suffering as well and we need to sit and sit and tire of it and you black sit on the board you know it's just race you know back there in the days they had words for people that betrayed the betrayed the race of their people and it was a strange word they used those words we don't take this very lightly. And, I, and, I, and I'm here to just say it plain. The line is drawn in the same. And, and, and we're not going to tolerate the thing. Travis, what do you think about they wouldn't let you finish? How do you feel about that? Do you have another point to make? If so what other point you would have made? I feel that they could have, but they just didn't want to. Because once you set yourself in a situation where you know you're wrong, it's hard to set face. They're ashamed, and they don't want to face up to the facts that they know they're wrong. And then once you're wrong, you're just wrong. Just accept it and just go forward. And that's all I pretty much have to say. Thank you very much. Thank yes, you very much. sir. Doc, considering, considering you had someone speaking, it seemed like he was, he was out. They don't. He was laying it out pretty well. My question to you is, what do you think about them cutting him off? Do you think they should have listened to him? Because it was dealing with a, a very pointed issue. Like they of, of course they, could, they should have listened to that, man. And, and, uh, I couldn't yield my time. Of course he, they couldn't listen to that. This, this, is very, this is very, very serious, man. And it's crucial. They need to take the time and listen. They do. Honestly, they do. Bro. What do, what do you think about tonight, brother? He, he had more. He, he requested more time. It seemed like he was defining and laying it out to help clarify. Why don't you think they would say, we just give you a few more minutes because to make it clear. Why do you think they didn't do when, that? When you are wrong, when you are wrong, it's difficult to respond. What were they going to say? He laid everything out. He proved not only that the black community was deceived, but they were deceived by these unscrupulous contractors. And they should want to hear more about that. Thank you very much. Thank you. about the meeting tonight? It's not only affecting black people, but it's affecting young black people. Young black people. As we grow up and we have to see the struggle, we feel the pain. And the board can't do nothing about it. Mm -hmm. But they can. Mm -hmm. All it takes is effort. But you know. what, what grade are you in? Thank you very much. What do you think about the meeting tonight? Well, I heard what was said, and I maybe some progress is going to be made. But the one thing I can say, I was just talking to one of the members of the church over there, Lord, 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 and we were just discussing while he went out and wait. You know, you can, you can, you can lead a horse to war, but you can't make him go. He, if he's stubborn enough or he's ignorant enough that he don't know. And I'm thinking that my first thought was with, 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 the, with the black members on the board. 
that even if they were behind the scenes, they could have at least made us feel better by not making it unanimous. But they put it unanimous. So if they are in that mindset and that belief, they might get by. It. But there is a end. And every one that do wrong is going to give an account. You can live this whole life and make it in, but you're not going to make it into the afterlife. You're going to give an account and you do wrong. Reverend Rose, what the poor was, was legally right is not always morally right. Reverend, what's your name? Sam Robinson. Thank you so much. Once again, this is the Ghetto Free Press as I bring this to a close. I ask members of the board, uh, Dr. Kaysen, uh, Warren Lee and others, I asked for comments, Shretwell, and uh, they didn't have any comments. I gave an opportunity to rebut what has been said here, but they didn't say anything, they didn't have nothing to say. Once again, the Ghetto Free Press report, what others ignore. If you'll notice, I want you to listen to what the TV stations report about this, as well as your local newspaper. Because once again, this is something that citizens are concerned about, because it's affecting our children. Peace.